Previously, fate enters Babylon, a city whose walls are made up of a strong alloy to prevent the attacks of dangerous monsters. He enters the North Gate and is surprised to see that food prices are five times higher than in the rest of the country. That's because supplying food to this part of the country is harder and more costly. Suddenly, a knight announces that their new lord has arrived. Fate wears his mask and is surprised to see that the people of Babylon accept Roxy as their new lord. Suddenly, he feels that someone whispered in his ear that Lady Roxy is going to die in Babylon. Now, Fate learns more about the city of Babylon. It's a relatively expensive city where all the merchants and fighters gather. Those who have grudges against the Holy Knights come here too. Being closer to Galia, it always needs powerful people to fight the monsters. So if anyone powerful with a criminal record arrives here, the people of Babylon will forgive them. They want to enlist as much help as they can to fight against the monsters. Fate finds this information interesting. Moreover, he is not interested in revealing his identity yet. So he thinks it will be a perfect place for him. On the other hand, Roxy meets the holy knight in Babylon named Northern Alistair. He was the one who looked after the city after Roxy's father passed away. He is so happy to welcome Roxy there and he shares that he fought alongside Sir Mason and was with him in his final moments. But he gets sad, saying that he could not save him. She is so surprised to know that Northern was with her father. She wants to make him her ally to fight with the monsters in the future. So Northern happily accepts her offer and they shake hands. In that moment, Northern and Roxy look at each other while Mirin dislikes the way he watches Roxy and wants to interrupt them. But Mugen can hardly stop her or control her from committing this stupid act. He reminds her that Northern is a holy knight, so if she disrespects him in any way, he will crush her head like a pest. Suddenly, Roxy turns around and tells them to get ready to take a look at the town. On the other hand, Fate wanders the city and gets so worried about the cost of living in Babylon. A room in a hotel will cost him 10 gold coins per day. He has no idea how he will manage to pay for his stay. Suddenly, he stops by an armor shop and Greed asks him to buy a scabbard to keep it inside. But Fate watches the intricate design on the scabbard and tells him that it looks expensive. At the same time, the shopkeeper comes out and asks them to come inside the shop if they are interested in buying anything. Suddenly, he's astonished to see Fate's shroud. It burned at several points. As an expert, the shopkeeper looks closely at the marks and reveals that he thinks they were burned by something like a fireball. But it would be something more powerful. Greed appreciates that the man can identify the details in anything. He keeps insisting on buying the scabbard while telling Fate that he can earn more money by hunting the monsters. So Fate shows his sword to the shopkeeper and asks him if he can make a scabbard for it. The shopkeeper takes a closer look at the goods and appreciates the design and unique look. Greed gets so happy to hear the words of appreciation. The shopkeeper reveals that making a scabbard worthy of this sword will cost him 500 gold coins. Fate gets so surprised and annoyed to hear the extravagant prices and marches out of the shop. He stands at a place around the corner when a few warriors ask him if he wants to join their tribe. Fate politely refuses and shares that he does not work for anyone. But watching his ragged shroud, the gang does not insist on taking him into their team. Now Fate seriously thinks that he needs to change his attire and get a good appearance because it really matters. He moves ahead and reaches the border of the city. Suddenly, he smells an awkward smell as he enters an area full of moss. Greed tells him that he is now closer to the border of Galia. The smell is coming from the poisonous moss in Galia. Anyone who breathes deeply in its air will get the fungus inhaled into their lungs, and this will act as poison. Fate immediately covers his nose and scolds Greed for not telling him earlier. At the same time, they see a number of orcs coming towards him. Greed tells him that these orcs have power equal to humans, so he must fight wisely. Fate begins running towards them, but he stops as he watches the other warriors coming to fight them. They want to kill them, as by selling orc ears, they will earn gold coins. Greed keeps insisting that Fate must also join the fight, but he does not do that. At the same time, he sees another herd of orcs coming from another direction, and he decides to fight against them. They throw fire arrows towards him. To prevent the fire arrows, Greed upgrades to the third level and makes a shield in front of Fate. Fate begins running towards the orcs behind the shield. The orcs attack him, but with the shield bash, their attack keeps coming back to them. So the orcs begin falling quickly. At the same time, Fate's gluttony skill gets activated, and he gains more speed to move towards the orcs. He kills all the orcs and appreciates Aron for teaching him great skills that helped him today. He collects all the orc ears and brings them to the local shop in Babylon to sell. The girl at the shop receives the heist as a surprise. While the warriors there claim that they killed the orcs, they will receive their reward. Fate tells them to stop misbehaving politely, but when they do not stop, he throws them all one by one out. Suddenly, one warrior attacks him from behind, but Fate stops it with his bag of orc ears and hits him. Afterward, he receives 100 gold coins, and suddenly someone wants to know who he is. He turns around and gets so surprised to see Roxy there. She could not recognize him as he was in the skull mask. After knowing that Fate only defended himself from the attack, she forgives him. 
but she tells the other warriors to spend one night in prison. That's because the law and order situation in Babylon was pathetic after the death of her father. But next time, anyone committing the crime will receive the full punishment. Fate appreciates the decision but suddenly Miria begins trying to remove his mask. He resists, but she does not stop. Finally, Roxy interrupts and tells her to stop, as the masks are part of a warrior's dress. Then Fate shares his name as Corpse and Roxy advises him to wear a better dress because, in a ragged shroud, he does not look like a warrior. After he leaves, Mugen shares that he looks so weak for a man who killed so many orcs. As he walks past the street, he seriously thinks of changing his clothes. Suddenly, the armor shop owner stops him and wants to know if he was the one who killed so many orcs. His story has already become the talk of the town, so the shopkeeper wants Fate to wear the dress he made. Because he recently opened the shop, it will be a great tactic for his shop's advertisement. Fate agrees, and the shopkeeper gives him a very fine dress worthy of a warrior. But in the end, he demands 80 gold coins. But they agree on 40 as he discounts the rest of the amount for advertising. Afterward, Fate feels hungry and stops by a shop where a lot of people wait to get in, guessing that the food must be great there. Fate enters inside, but he gets so surprised to see that people are not there for food. Instead, they were there to look at a very attractive young woman. Suddenly, she looks at Fate and reveals that she was already waiting for him. They sit at a table together and the girl tells him that she is one of the deadly sins of lust. She lures and attracts everyone, regardless of their gender. She says that she has been waiting for Fate since his gluttony skill was activated. Surprisingly, she already knew about greed, mine, and how Fate killed Haniel. Fate could not take his eyes off her mesmerizing beauty. Many times, he tries to distract himself, but his eyes keep rolling to see Lust's beauty. She appreciates how they killed a chimera, but she does not know who moved the chimera out of Galia, and she tells him that there are a few other chimeras too. Then she comes to the real point of why she waited for Fate. She reveals that, besides being one of the seven deadly sins, she is also a guardian of the kingdom. She sees the long-term benefits of humanity. She plans what is beneficial for the people in the coming 500 years and plans accordingly. According to their plan, Roxy has to die. Fate is so surprised to know this and asks her to explain how killing her will benefit people. So Lust explains that all the Holy Knights have mistreated the public in the past few years. That has raised the aggression in their hearts. That aggression will ultimately turn into a monster and it will never go away. The aggression born from the untimely death of their beloved Holy Knight, Roxy, in Galia will follow the other aggressions. That will also give birth to a new human power. Fate gets so angry hearing that, as he sees no benefit in the plan. He gets so angry and throws the wine glass in front of him. Lust tells him that the plan is already in action. He feels so aggressive that he walks out of the hotel. He decides that he will save Roxy at every cost. Roxy fights the orcs at the border of Galia along with Mirin and Mugen. And that's the end of the ninth episode of Berserk of Gluttony. Please comment and let me know which anime recap you'd like to see next. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye.